Hello and welcome to Transamerics. My name is Matt and I'm joined by Stefan and Ewan to discuss the future of Celtic's Matt O'Reilly. After some interest from Atletico Madrid in January, the Europa League champions Atalanta are currently pushing to sign the midfielder, having had two bids rejected, the recent bid of €17.8 million. Euro. Ewan, I want to come to you first because you're writing a piece on Matt O'Reilly at the moment. Can you tell us a little bit about the player and, and how well he's done since he went to Scotland? Yeah, he's been a tremendous success since moving to Celtic from MK Dons. The fee was, you know, around about €2 million. Euros. Um, his market value has kind of soared uh, across that time to become the, the most valuable player ever uh, in the Scottish Premiership. But he's been a real revelation since joining the club. Last season was by far his best uh, in the green and white. 19 goals and 18 assists in 49 games. So if you don't know who Matt O'Reilly is, you probably think that's a striker uh, or a winger, but he's actually a, a central midfielder. Um, certainly, you know, he plays more advanced role, maybe like a number 10 or a number 8. He's two positions where he does five, but um, he's an incredible player. Um, very good technically. He's got a good engine on him. You know, as you can tell by his you know, attacking goal contributions, he can always pop up with a goal and an assist. He's really comfortable in possession. You know, Celtic, despite their domestic dominance in Scotland over the last decade or so, have struggled in Europe. And you know that did continue last season, but Matt O'Reilly put in some really standout performances. And obviously, they've got that interest um, from Atletico Madrid. Uh, it's quite interesting that O'Reilly mentioned um, just after January, his, his form kind of dipped. He started the season really well. Then when there was interest in Atletico Madrid, he admitted that that did kind of turn his head a little bit. It's kind of natural for that to happen when a club of that size come in for you, I, I imagine. But towards the tail end of the season, um, Celtic kind of really pulled away from Rangers the title race and, and Matt O'Reilly was excellent again. And It's no surprise that this bid just came in from uh, Atalanta, but I don't think the fee at the moment, you know, just under 18 million euros is what we won that turned Celtic head to even really bring him to the table. It's the second bid that Celtic have rejected already in the window. I think we'll be looking for around about 25 million euros minimum um, base fee before obviously add-ons and, and things like that before they even consider selling them out already. Celtic are a cash-rich club. Um, they've done excellent to sell players uh, over the last decade. Um, so there's no real desperation to sell. Imagine the player... When you talk about the wages, and, and Brendan Rogers mentioned this in his press conference just the other day, that it's difficult for Celtic to keep players because they can get far bigger wages at other clubs. So imagine Matt really does have ambitions to play at a higher level, but I don't think he's the sort of player who's really going to push through a move. Stefan, let's talk a little bit more about Matt O'Reilly's market value because as you would mentioned there, he is the most valuable player in Scottish Premiership history currently at €20 million. Euro. How, how has he ended up at that figure? Yeah, well, uh, anyone who just listened to Ewan kind of wax lyrically about his performances at Celtic goes some way to explaining why he has done so well. He's a central midfielder who scores goals, who creates goals for fun, and he's really made short work of the Scottish Premiership in general. As Ewan said, there are still areas at Celtic where the club itself can do much better, of course, uh, in international competitions and European competitions, but we can't really hold that against Matt O'Reilly personally. Uh, and yeah, his rise at Celtic has been really quite staggering. As Ewan said, he basically joined the club when his market value was about 1.5 million euros. So since that kind of uh, transfer day, which is January 2022, his market value has risen by about 19.5 million euros, I think, which uh, to give you some kind of context is almost twice uh, as high, as, as twice as much of a rise as the next best player um, in the Scottish Premiership at that time, which is Cameron Carter-Vickers. His market value has risen by 11 million. And after that, it's Rio Hatate, uh, whose market value has risen by 9.2 million. So in terms of his performances, that's why his market value has risen. But there are other factors, of course. As you mentioned, he does have a long-term contract. His contract runs until 2027. In fact, just before we started recording this, I think Brendan Rodgers has more or less came out and said, look, we're in no rush to sell because he's on a long-term contract. He's not pushing for a move. Contract length isn't the be-all and end-all here at Transomark. There are other, are other websites that do pay a lot of attention to that. But as you'll find on our website, we do have players out of contract who do have market value. So it's not as if the market value runs down to zero uh, as their contract expires. But it does play some factor, of course. A player who's got a long-term contract will be able to demand a much higher fee. But the other thing that's probably more important is the kind of outside factors. How often do players leave the Scottish Premiership for high values? How often do Celtic sell players for high values? And how often do clubs buy players from Celtic of Mal Riley's quality and how much do they tend to go for? And if we do kind of look at historic uh, transfer fees that clubs have paid for Scottish Premiership players, we can see why Celtic would be holding out for about 25 million euros. Of course, there's Yota at the very top who made the move to Saudi Arabia last year for 29.1 million euros. 
maybe something of an outlier just because you know Saudi clubs do tend to pay quite a lot, lot of money uh, you know I don't think Celtic will really be expecting clubs in Europe to be quite as gung-ho with their kind of you know, negotiations as a lot of Saudi clubs have been recently but even below the author we've got Kieran Tierney who moved to Arsenal for 27 million euros Calvin Bassey who moved to Ajax for 23 million Moussa Dembele who moved to Lyon for 22 and then you've got guys like Edward, Christopher Ayer, and then Virgil van Dijk going almost 10 years back now uh, in the mid-teens, of course, and Victor Manyama who was Southampton. The key thing there, I think, to note is that it's not uncommon for Celtic to demand fees in the top, you know, the mid-20s uh, for players. As you can see in that list, eight of the top 10 are Celtic players. Uh, and as you said, that's because they are a very cash-rich club. They're usually in very comfortable footing when they go into these negotiations. Uh, and they're quite happy holding out for the most uh, money that you can get. And also, if you actually look through that list of players as well, by and large, most of them have kind of done exactly what they said they did on the 10 when they were signed. You know, we're talking about a good group of players who moved to the Premier League uh, and performed rather admirably well. Moussa Dembele did well in France. Uh, Calvin Bass is obviously still quite early in his career. Um, Kieran Tierney, despite his injury troubles, uh, was quite well regarded at Arsenal as well. And then there's Yota, who's uh, in Saudi Arabia, which is a bit of a different situation. So, you know, by and large, when clubs do come in to spend a lot of money on Scottish Premiership players at this level, they do tend to do quite well. So Celtic can go to the negotiating table and say, yes, Matt O'Reilly's done well in Scottish Premiership. Scottish Premiership might not be the highest standard in Europe. But if you kind of look at our track record of young, good players coming through the club, they do tend to live up to the billing. And that's more or less why uh, Celtic can probably hold out for a fee slightly higher than uh, Yota's card market value of €20 million. Euros. Looking at this from a Matt O'Reilly pr- uh, perspective, do, do we think a move to Atalanta is, is the right thing for him? And I'll stick with you on this, Stefan, with Toyn Coop Miners looks at to, to make a move to Juventus and Ederson as well has been heavily linked with with a lot of clubs, especially in the Premier League. Now, they have brought in a couple of, of attacking players. They made the Charles de Catalera move permanent and they've also brought in Nicolas Zaniolo on loan with an obligation to buy. Do you think if O'Reilly makes this move to Atalanta that there's there's game time there for him and it's, it's the right next step in his career? I think it's a smart move. You know, Atlanta have proved over the last kind of couple of years that they're very good at bringing in players, developing them, and then moving them on to other clubs. Um, you know, perhaps the most example, the most notable example, as Rasmus Hoyland, who moved on to Manchester United, but there are a number of other examples as well. Um, I think the thing that's really worth, two things I think are worth noting here about um, um, O'Reilly's current situation. One is that even though he's a Danish international, he does have an English passport. He was born in England, so... That should really matter, of course, but it does when it comes to the Premier League signing kind of homegrown players. I'm not quite sure how O'Reilly fits in as a homegrown talent, but I think he probably would qualify, which is obviously something that adds a bit of a premium to these players. Uh, and then the other thing as well is that O'Reilly did miss out on that Denmark squad for the Euros. And I suspect that if you'd asked him back in January what his plans were, what his agent's plans were, I think there was a be- would have been high hopes of him making it into that Danish national team, showing what he could do, add the Euros, and then maybe picking up a move to a bigger club. But with all due respect to Atalanta, uh, I suspect that what they're probably looking at there is the fact that they could use them as a kind of stepping stone to a bigger club in two or three years' time. And at the age of 23, he's still got a lot of time to develop and pick his uh, his next moves quite carefully. Ewan, would you agree with, with that synopsis? I mean, looking at Atalanta's sales, I think from from their perspective, they kind of they they tried to move away from that selling club. Uh, title in the last couple of years and it's, it's resulted in a Europa League title for them but even looking at the players they've sold in the last five or six years that have ended up moving on and, and playing with, with bigger teams as Rasmus Hoyland as Stefan mentioned Christian Romero Dan Kulisevsky Alessandro Bastoni of course at, at Inter Milan and there's a long list there of players who've gone into Atalanta gotten better and have gotten a bigger move Yeah it's certainly a pathway to, to bigger leagues or, or bigger clubs certainly and I think from going from Scotland in the Scottish Premiership to Serie A as a, I think a good jump from Al Rayleigh, a good test for him. But I also think it kind of suits his gameplay and how he plays. You know, he's, he can give quite a languid player. Obviously, Serie A is a lot more tactical, for example, than the Premier League. It's less physically demanding. Um, there's also been links to Premier League clubs as well. I think Southampton have been quite strongly linked to Matt O'Reilly. Um, but I think Atlanta will be a smart move. Um, you know, whether a Premier League, cup, league cup, club comes in, could they offer more money to Celtic? Can they offer more money to Matt O'Reilly? That might well prove... Um, to be the avenue I think from Celtic's point of view they'll be sitting hoping that more than one club come in they can kind of push the price up um, by you know taking more bids from more clubs but certainly a, a wise move for uh, Matt O'Reilly to move to Italy and like Stefan said I think if 
Matt O'Reilly perhaps had been playing in a, a league of a better reputation per se. They might have went to the Euros because I think if you look at his numbers in Scotland and you know his output compared to some other players who made the Danish squad, then it's like a, it's a bit unusual that he didn't get in. Um, but that is probably because he's playing in Scotland and it doesn't necessarily have the best reputation um, amongst international managers. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about Matt O'Reilly's future and if the move to Atlanta will happen. And if it does, if you think it's the right move for the player, hit the subscribe button if you want more of these chats from us throughout the summer and the like button if you've enjoyed this one in particular. But as always, thanks for watching.